Have you ever quoted a movie whilst talking to someone in a serious situation? If so how did it turn out? Whilst interviewing for a job as a leasing agent at an apartment complex, the interviewer randomly handed me the pen she was writing with and said sell me this pen, just like in Wolf of Wall Street. So I whip back around with do me a favor and write your name on that piece of paper, just like in the movie, expecting her to get that I'd caught her reference and we could move on. Nope. She says I can't. I don't have a pen. I hand the one back to her and finish sweetly with supply and demand. She was blown away. Didn't get the job because of a drug test but it was a fun interview. Comma didn't get the job because of a drug test but it was a fun interview. Dude, you need to learn when to stop with the impersonation. Sitting on runway next to some lady who just won't stop talking to brief. Make a few fight club references. Single serving friends and whatnot. Get the feeling she's never seen the movie. Plane starts to take off and I say something to the order of this is the part where I always hope the plane crashes because my insurance pays out double on business trips. Not a peep out of her the rest of the flight. You know a great one to say to any girl you are dating? Comma you smell like angels ought to smell. 60% of the time. It works every time. 60% of the time. It works every time. I actually managed to slip that one by my father when explaining a recipe. I used to work in a bar, and on a certain night the bouncer at the door asked for backup because a group of troublemakers at the door was making some trouble. I went there, not specifically buffed but 6F5, and I told them they really could not go in. When again they started arguing I screamed, why oh you 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 shall not pass. It was so awkward but it did result that they decided to leave. It became a running joke at my bar. Haha <laughs> this is hilarious. I wish I could have seen this happen. I got into a car wreck about a year ago. Totaled my Nissan. After a few moments of wondering whether I was dead or alive, someone ran over to the wreckage and asked if I was alright. After helping me out, I began to test my legs. Sure enough, they worked fine. Somewhere in the depths of my mind, a quote from my absolute favorite movie doctor, Strange Love, made its way to the forefront, and in front of God and the world, I cried out, Mind Fura, I can walk. This project is definitely critical path, the clients are clamoring for it, my team has been working all weekend to prepare the estimate and what we've found is why we're having this emergency meeting today, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, it's bigger than we expected. Based on our analysis and the amount of technical debt we're dealing with, that original estimate isn't anywhere near the total project's duration. It's just the tip. Just the tip. Just the tip. Cue the QA lead, expelling a mouthful of coffee through his nose. I'd been working at a place for about a week. I came in about 5 minutes late and clocked in. The woman on reception says to me I'm going to have to note that you're late. I tell her a wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrived precisely when he means to she said nothing and started back at her computer. My boss told me off later that day. Should have put on your robe and wizard hat. Didn't quote a specific movie but sort of channeled some good old fashioned 80s action movie one liners. Hotel was on lockdown as an angry partner of one of the housekeepers had a shotgun and was supposedly on his way to the hotel. I sent the maintenance guy to hide in the bushes out the back with a mobile and call us if he sees the guy. Maintenance guy's gun hobbyist and likes this assignment but then turns and asks what does he look like. I have no FN idea so I respond with he'll be the one with the shotgun. With great power comes great responsibility to my 8 year old son once. He was entrusted with the life of a hamster and had to take care of it. He loves Spidey so he laughed very hard but got the message. One year has passed and the hamster's still alive. Oh god. I misread that last sentence as one year he passed and the hamster's still alive. I pulled out a line from Blade Runner in a job interview a few years ago. When the hiring manager started asking me the crazy hypothetical questions I responded with. Do you make these questions up, Mrs. Manager? Or do they write them down for you? She showed me the book she was reading them from that she'd been hiding under her desk and we had a laugh about it. Thankfully she didn't ask about my mother. So I got the job. I'm Mr. Manager. All the time in writers workshops, I just change notes to words and quote Emperor Joseph in Amadeus. 
My dear young man, don't take it too hard. Your work is ingenious. It's quality work, and there are simply too many words. That's all. Just cut a few and it will be perfect. If they ask which ones, I tell them the adverbs. Not the adverbs. Slowly surely really learn your adverbs here. During my performance review my manager told me even though your execution has been great, you have not done things to go above and beyond, you have to do those to get promotion to which I said well, that's just like, your opinion man. My manager did not get the Liboski reference and he looked at me with all the confusion he had. That is amazing. I once fell asleep during a sales meeting at an office job I hated, my head rolled back and I hit it on the ledge of whiteboard. Frick. I said quietly, as I rubbed the back of my head, is there something you wanted to say my boss said fully stopping his lecture about whatever, nothing sir, just a little excited to get out there and whoop ET's butt, the room laughed including my boss who later that day told me to nut up or shut up. I was meeting my girlfriend's boss for the second time and he could remember my name, so I said it's okay, I wouldn't remember me either which is from American Beauty, but it made it super uncomfortable. Oh honey, don't be weird. One time I was out to eat with a friend, and when I returned to the table from the bathroom, our food had arrived, so I quoted the whole Pulp Fiction don't you just love it when you come back from the bathroom and find your food waiting for you, but she didn't get it, so I let it go, and then we just had a discussion about how nice that was. I guess it's not the most memorable quote from Pulp Fiction. And then you ask her if she speaks English, mother. Never give up, never surrender, they thought I was cheesy but went along it, they did not recognize the greatness of the quote. By grab the hammer, what a savings. When discussing problems with software that has become corrupted and can't be fixed, I have said nuke the site from orbit, it's the only way to be sure, by which I mean, complete uninstall and reinstall, recreate the database, revert to the last good backup, etc. And speaking of aliens. I have always wanted to, at the end of meetings when they ask any further questions, raise my hand and say how do I get out of this chicken shit outfit probably wouldn't go over too well though. I like to reply to people questions with a childlike affirmative. Some people get it and I get a nod of agreement. Others think I'm weirdo who likes talking like a young girl. First week in a new job as a tech specialist at a high school. I don't know anybody, this cute English teacher comes storming into the library one afternoon while I'm working on a printer. This teacher, bless her, is not very tech savvy, she knows how to use computers in a very limited fashion at this stage of our friendship. Her, you, computer dude, why is the new gradebook system so confusing? Me, I don't know, I don't know a thing about the new LMS yet, I'm just here for the printer. Her, I know it's not your fault. I'm just venting. I mean whose idea was it to use one LMS for lesson plans and another for attendance and gradebook? It's big awkward silence of a few seconds here. I don't have an answer so I get flustered because she's cute and I wanted to disarm her hostility. So without thinking my next words through I say, I don't know mom. Some people juggle geese. Her eyebrows arch. She tilts her head to one side, narrowing her eyes. I'm thinking I blew it. There's no way that was appropriate and she's going to think I'm a total weirdo. Then her frustration melts away into curiosity. Did. Did you just quote Firefly? Me. Did we just become best friends? I was working at a software company that was making some pretty complex control software on site for a customer. They were in turn selling that software as part of a top down solution to their customer. Things were not going well because they made some promises about our development that they did not tell us about beforehand. We found out about this maybe a week before the date they promised. Naturally there was no way it would be done before then. We were working very hard to get stuff done, but the software involved motion control potential damage to hardware, and possible injury to the user so it was very painstaking. One day the end customer shows up and wants to have a come to Jesus meeting. We get called in and questioned about who knew what and when. After the meeting, the representative to us from the middle company comes in and apologizes to me saying I'm really sorry, we did not expect them to do that. We had no idea it would turn into such a Spanish inquisition. I looked him right in the eyes and said well no one ever expects the Spanish Inquisition. He nodded. 
having no idea what I was talking about and left. I turned to the room and the other software developers all chuckled. The opportunity of a lifetime. I quoted a Monty Python sketch to my wife and 5 year old daughter. My wife mentioned something about an argument between two kids, and my daughter said what's an argument I instantly replied. An argument is a connected series of statements intended to establish a proposition. Wife looked at me amazed that I could come up with such a concise definition so quickly. But I really wish she said, no it isn't. Yes it is, it isn't just contradiction. Obviously not serious but kinda relevant, was in a threesome and the guy was going down on the other girl and she was really into it, moaning and moving. When she was done and he came over to me I said I'll have what she's having and winked. Well, he didn't get it, he just had that weird look on his face then just went down on me. I felt awkward. This is freaking hilarious. We were talking about whether any one vote meant anything. I said, if we stop breathing we'll die. If we stop fighting our enemies, the world will die. He didn't get it and could not see my point. I gave up, but he wasn't the enemy. Nearly came off the road while driving with a friend, him behind the wheel. Apparently, my cry of now this is pod racing wasn't appropriate. Our proquelmums. I quoted a line from the movie Hudson Hawk when I was debating economics and the gold standard with a guy at work. He recognized it which surprised me because that movie is pretty obscure. We laughed our assess off and been friends ever since. Love this movie. Upvote for taste. Checking someone out at the local grocery store. Me. Your total will come to $4.20. Customer. It's in the machine. Me. To myself. We can rebuild him. Customer. Stares confused at me until the receipt prints. Me. I. Have a good day. Had to read your entire post before I understood the context of checking someone out. I'm over here like dude. That's the least smoothing I've ever heard. Thought it was funny to shout your out of order at the traffic judge. Spent a few hours in the lockup for contempt. I'm sure it's the court version of it must be free to cashiers. Whenever someone says that they're making their way downtown or walking fast or that they're homebound, I usually just start speaking the lyrics of that Vanessa Carlton song in the form of questions posed to the person, until they get it or get weirded out. I don't know why I can't understand this. Why am I so stupid? Hey, it's not your fault. I know. Look at me. It's not your fault. I know. It's not your fault. Comma I know. No you don't. It's not your fault. Comma don't frick with me. Breaks down crying. It'll do this in situations when people make really small mistakes or blame themselves over something small. When they get the reference and go along with it, it's awesome. So, it's more a song than a movie. But, a visiting professor that works with my father was telling me about how someone messed up her car in the parking lot. And the police came out with a camera, and she started describing the process, and I'm just like, 27 8x10 color glossy photos with circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one, turns out nobody's heard of Alice's restaurant in Bulgaria. You can get, anything you want, at Alice's restaurant. My dad knew this song by heart and would do the entire 18 minutes if you let him. My mom wanted to play it at his funeral but we convinced her to play something else by Arlo. My bachelorette party took us to an Irish pub, where we played a game that forced us to interact with a lot of very drunk people. We ended up making friends with a couple who was also getting married soon, and the woman cornered me on my way to the bathroom. She was very drunk and confessed that she was having second thoughts about getting married. It's not the best sex I've ever had, you know? What if I get bored? I gave her an approximation of a quote from Trainwreck. Think about the best sex you ever had. Do you wanna marry that guy? No. Best sex you ever had guy is probably in prison by now. I then asked her to think about who she wanted to take care of her when she was sick. To help her raise her kids, to be next to her when she was old. She looked at me with tears in her eyes and thanked me for saving her engagement. I like to think of that as the day Amy Schumer helped me save a marriage. I like to think of that as the only day Amy Schumer helped you save any marriage. So had surgery yesterday morning and she was freaking out. 
When they took her back, I nonchalantly say, may the force be with you. I got looks and giggles from all around and she gave the are you freaking kidding me look. Nice. I can basically quote the whole of holes. I very often will say a duck may swim on the lake, but my daddy owns the lake. I quote holes all the time. The easiest go to being I can fix that, and when something bad happens I'll blame it on my no good dirty rotten pig stealing great great grandfather, and randomly throw out my thoughts on any given day. It should be no labor to be nice to your neighbor pops into my head without warning. One of my favorite movies of all time. I was having a political argument with a friend and he started to say suppose you were, when I cut him off with I do not entertain hypotheticals. The world as it is is vexing enough which is a quote from True Grit. He looked perplexed for a few seconds and then told me to frick off. I won that round. When I was 16 my brother showed me my now favorite movie, Repo. The Genetic Opera. It's a musical. If the title didn't give that much away. Anyway I got back from school one day and my dad wasn't home. I turned to my brother and, poorly, sang where the frick is dad, Brotha. He turned to me and replied he left me in charge, sister. Me and my brother haven't always gotten along so little moments like this mean the world to me. OMG I love repo. Any chance to scream daddy's girl's a freaking monster is fun. A girl was getting mad and yelling at me. So I told her I have to return some videotapes. And then I got yelled at because Blockbuster was out of business for years and even DVDs were being phased out. Yep, yeah, like I said, they are really late. Gotta go. My ex-girlfriend had an eating disorder and struggled with depression. I found it hard to support her because there was little I could do about the issues themselves. But I could be there for her and do whatever I could to make her happy. So while we were talking about it and she said that it shouldn't be my problem to deal with and I shouldn't have to have it weigh on me too. So I said I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. She loved LOTR so it meant a lot to her. RLT in Afghanistan was giving a little speech before we headed out on a night op. At first I thought I heard perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July, and you will once again be fighting for our freedom, and I was like, that sound familiar. He went on a bit more, then he let loose with, we will not go quietly into the night, we will not vanish without a fight, we're going to live on, we're going to survive, today we celebrate our independence day. Another one, my first week in a new office, I barely know the people, and one guy is helping me set up my desktop environment, I was doing something wrong and he told me the right way to do it, after it worked he said see, I told you that would work, I said yes, you're very smart, now shut up, instantly regretted it, because I have no idea who this guy is, what he's into, and I basically just told a supervisor to shut up. He leans back in his chair smiling and says will there be fencing in this story fortunate save. At an interview for a job at a math camp, guy asks me what topics I'm into, and having already established we are both nerds I say fractals ever since I watched Frozen and he responds, that movie is how old now, just let it go. My co-worker at a grocery store filled out his entire annual performance review using nothing but movie quotes and song titles. They basically just gave everyone a nickel raise per year unless you were really crap. So it didn't really matter anyway, but it was amusing enough to see him hand it in. I think one of the managers wound up telling him it showed he didn't take his career as a cart be bagger seriously. I was in a boardroom discussing a new product and comparing notes to a previous product that didn't fail but wasn't great. During this meeting we were discussing how to make this new product better and how to adjust our approach to get improved results. I boldly proclaimed if there's a new way I'll be the first in line, but it better work this time. And that's when I learned engineers aren't generally Megadeth fans. I was working as a waiter and we had this crappy system where you went around calling out table numbers rather than having set tables. Anyway I go up to a table I'm pretty sure is the right one and double check their order with the mum and the kid says to me these are not the droids you're looking for. Not me doing the quote but totally made my day. Should said, I'm sorry this is the wrong table, and walked away. Few years back was dealing with some know it all and he was getting on my nerves. I asked him, well. Do you know the airspeed velocity of a swallow in level flight? Who a number? 
so you don't everything, stfu. That's not really fair, you should have specified that it wasn't laden. I ran into my ex boss once who was supposed to be there when I got laid off, she feigned sickness, running home while her supervisor had to do the deep himself, so I'll let her have it, ending with a line from source 6, you look at me when you're killing me what can I say, I was pretty worked up. Your. A friend of mine found out his girlfriend was cheating on him. I told him life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Apparently you got a hoe. Made him laugh haha. A young female co-worker was putting on some hand lotion. I murmured it rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. She just stared holes in me. I didn't do anything like that again. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.